practical application. So we will see something that has become a real, true, applied uh, project, uh, product, right? That's what we have. All right, and we are changing the domains. We are going into the military. Okay. Well, good afternoon. I feel exposed and unrest. <laughs> I, hopefully you understand my English. And uh, in this case, I'm proposing a methodology to build up uh, specialized glossaries. And the product of it is a uh, military glossary. Well, this is uh, the, my agenda for this. This is a small introduction, the, the purpose theoretical framework, methodology findings, and some conclusions. Well, uh, let me begin by asking you some questions you don't have to answer. <laughs> is Esquadra the English equivalent for squad? Is the services a term for los servicios? Yeah. If you want the answer, use my glossary. <laughs> I'm sending my glossary. <laughs> okay, the Mexican Army and the US Army, for long, have been uh, enjoying excellent relationship. And just like in any relationship, what you need is communication, good communication. And that's what I'm trying to contribute. Okay, uh, our armies share some activities such as uh, VB, v VCCs, uh, border commanders meetings or conferences every year, operations against tra trafficking, uh, Population relief in case of disaster. This is narcissist. I'm, I'm there and you know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm there. Bilateral meetings and training. Here you are. <laughs> Significant questions by my students. They are really eager to know how to translate platoon and peloton and uh, cargador and uh, I mean they are really excited about it. No? Ah, uh, <laughs> what about this work? This is to propose a methodology, as I told you, to build these uh, specialized glossaries. And uh, the target audience is interpreters, translators. And we have a result here. This is a product, uh, it's a military glossary. Uh, this work is based on the knowledge of some experts, uh, especially in terminology. And it comes Sager and says that if you want a definition you don't just have to take into account the semantic specification, you have to rely on morphological, syntactic, and pragmatic specification if you want a robust uh, definition. Let's say squad. Squad, if, uh, squad is very easy to describe. You can say it's, it's a group of people, a group of soldiers, uh, but that doesn't tell you much. But what about if you include the number of members and the, uh, the context? So that would be really uh, uh, a pragmatic decision, now, a definition now. Well, Sager again tells us about the compounding method. And you know what? This was really useful for my, my work because with this method, I could tell you the, the difference in Mexico, uh, the US Army, uh, the Mexican Army has two captains. The US Army has one. How can I communicate these two to this uh, army? Uh, well, in Spanish would be, if you want to translate this, will be first captain and second captain, and that would be good. But it's still ambiguous. You don't know who's over. You don't know who's the superior or the, or the subordinate. But what about the upper half captain and lower half captain? No explanation. It's self-explained. And this upper half and lower half is used in the Navy. So they use it for the real admirals. Uh, then comes NIDA and tells us that if you want to prepare a, a, a glossary or a dictionary for the same culture or the same language, so it's, a, it's easier to analyze the problems of, uh, of terms uh, as compared to preparing a dictionary and a glossary of another language and another culture. Bilingual dictionaries are really hard. Why? Well, Larson helps us and tells us that the meaning of a lexical item is found if you study a particular, in particular and compare with other items, but they have to be closely, closely related. 
Well, Larson again says that uh, you have to pay attention to the secondary, secondary senses. Uh, a person who is learning a second language has problems with secondary, secondary senses. It's, easy, it's easier to, un to understand and to learn the primary senses. So let's say that uh, you have soldier and soldado. So you, you have the, f the, the first or the primary sense, soldier and soldado. That's not a problem. Both of them are in the army, both of them are military. But guess what? When you have a secondary, a secondary uh, sense, then comes to the rank. And soldado in Spanish, I want the rank, so in English would be private. How to know it? Use my glossary. <laughs> Uh, then Naida and Tabor comes and they uh, contribute with componential analysis. They tell us uh, they, they tell that they, they tell us about componential analysis, and they just measure, you know, the meaning uh, systematically. They examine the basic components of these lexical items and then compare them uh, with others. But they have to be within the, within the same semantic field. Okay, so in this case we have this glossary and we have some uh, English equivalents to our military glossary. Uh, it compiles these entries based on uh, component, component analysis, but in addition, uh, we take into account the author's expertise and some dictionary definitions, even bilingual definitions. And how to validate them? Well, again, the author's expertise uh, after years and years of uh, bilingual interaction, not only with the U.S. Army, but also with uh, military of or other parts of the world, other continents, and they have been, uh, they have uh, proven to be, I mean, effective. Another uh, uh, criterion is the terminographic one. We just uh, verify that they are, if they are in a specialized glossary or dictionary, then the uses of frequency. This is not uh, specifically how, how frequent a term uh, occurs in the, uh, in the corpus, but we take into account the collocations. It's not the same. For example, you say general officers and generals, they are the same. You, have not, you don't have any problem. But what about officers? You say oficiales. So what you need now is a collocation to say company grade officers, now you know that they are the same officiales in Espanol and company grade officers in, in English. So it's, it's really critical. Uh, and let's say that you have the, this military unit. You have the three uh, lexical items to contrast, compare, or to discriminate. And you have the variables or any other uh, uh, lexical uh, feature you want to discriminate. And let's say that pelotón and platoon and squad, you want to discriminate, you want to find the equivalent. So you go and say, okay, peloton, all of these three, they have commissioned officers. That means the officer from second lieutenant to general. No, none of them. The problem is not solved. Enlisted. Do they have enlisted? They, all of them have enlisted personnel. So the problem is not solved. What about the army? All of them are in the army? Yes, they are in the army. So problem unsolved yet. But what about the number of members? That's critical. Now you see that peloton, 11 members. Platoon, 26 to, to 66. 26 to 66. Squad, approx 11. So as you can see, pel uh, Peloton and Squad, they are the same. Uh, in this case, uh, if you translate the name of the movie, Peloton and Platoon, which was already translated like that, there's no problem. There's no problem at all. The problem comes when you call, you know, in an operation, you call some rations for your Peloton and you, uh, and you meant platoon. Someone is not going to eat today. Mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, you, uh, let's think about, so uh, let's see that you are asking for ammunition or weapons. So that would be better. Uh, well, we found that these two glossaries, one, almost 9,000 entries, out of which only 213 were relevant, the, the, the glossaries we were using in, 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 in our army, and the second glossary, almost 11,000, out of which 292 uh, were uh, valuable or relevant. So we concluded 
that uh, the available reference were not enough, were not sufficient. The methodological and theoretical frameworks prove adequate to tackle the cost, not problem, but we are attacking the cost. Meaning-based approach proved effective for this term translation, and a practical military glossary with the appropriate features was proposed, which I'm proposing, and that's the product of it. And this is the way it looks. And it has uh, the, part, the part of speech, it has uh, a context, some notes, and even the self field. Yeah, so consider, I consider it's useful. <laughs> So you have the question, I'm happy to answer now. But crystal clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm just wondering, if, if, so the glossary is a great idea, right? And especially in the sense that you're taking things that existed before and, and obviously improving on them because a lot of this stuff is not relevant. So you made a glossary. What's to ensure that it doesn't become irrelevant as things change? Now, maybe in the military terms, this doesn't change as quickly as in some areas, but just generally, as we know, language changes, meanings shift, and things move. So how would you imagine being able to make this dynamic and that it could be updated? I mean, all the work you've done, you wouldn't want someone to have to recreate this all. Right. You, sort of. This is an open source. This is open, just like any other glossary. It's open to updating, and it will be controlled by the language school in the Mexican Army. And everyone who wanted to collaborate with this updating will be, you know, uh, will follow this uh, policy of open doors. Uh, they will, they can contribute to this updating, as you are saying, and you're right, I agree. Um, that's, that's, that, that, that would be it, a good way. It's open. Okay. Could you explain what you meant when you said that uh, a fraction of those entries were relevant? What does you mean? They, they are... All oh, right, oh, okay, they were term. relevant, you know why? Because they are Mexican military terms. Other terms, I mean, they are full of terms which don't belong to our lexicon, the milita Mexican military lexicon. They, for example, there was one, they say sub subcomandante, which I uh, fully understand, but we don't, don't use uh, 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 subcomandante, we use uh, deputy commander, that's segundo comandante, that's another point. So, some, some, if you want to know how to say segundo comandante, you can check my closer. <laughs> no. We do but, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, I mean, uh, you're you are right. Uh, that, that's the way to see which are the uh, match the Mexican uh, lexicon. Yes. Uh, following Professor Franklin's question, uh, well, the glossary was produced using uh, multi-term, which is a terminology tool, which can also be connected to a uh, 